Hello and welcome to Mr C History. Now, behind me is potentially London's most controversial war memorial. It also happens to be London's largest war memorial, a war memorial that maybe not many people have heard of or know quite where it is because of its controversy. It is, of course, the memorial to Bomber Command, the part of the RAF that sent off hundreds of missions across Germany in the Second World War to bomb German cities. We'll look at the history of all that and we'll also talk a lot about the controversy. But first and foremost, I want to look at the design of this interesting memorial. Now, as mentioned there, the design is rather interesting. First and foremost, its height is 8 metres high. It's 80 metres long as well. It's absolutely huge. Much, much bigger even than the Cenotaph, that main war memorial in Whitehall. First and foremost, these amazing Doric columns and the sort of crenellations at the top. This is meant to evoke a sort of Greek temple or a Roman temple or something like that, vaguely something religious. And then if we go into it as well here, we are greeted by these seven airmen. These are actually meant to be members of a uh, air group. You've got the pilot, I think the pilot's at the back with his hat on there. Uh, then you've got the radio uh, chap here as well. So this is a group and they look heroic, but they look stern as well and had a, a difficult time of it. You've got another the sort of Greek temple side of these, is what, what potentially might be where flames would have been. And we have uh, a few quotes in here, which is rather interesting. This first one talks about the amount of people that this is dedicated to, 55,000 airmen killed. We'll talk more about that unbelievably high number and its significance in a moment. And it's the dedication to RAF command. On this wall is rather interesting. It's a quote from Winston Churchill which says the fighters are our salvation but the bombers alone provide the means to victory. The whole thing of course is made from that glorious Portland stone like many war memorials but one other interesting bit these sort of long elements that go onto the side of it here's the main memorial inside this of course is meant to, meant to represent wings the Air, Air Force, RAF etc. This is a memorial that has wings but the final quote which is in here is someone that you probably would miss. It's right at the top here, <laughs> really, really hard to actually read at any angle. But it says, uh, this memorial is commemorates those who have all nations who have lost their lives in the bombing of the Second World War. I think a bit of an afterthought. We'll talk about that as well in a minute. But very interesting design. The only other thing to say about the design is that despite its size, it's actually a bit hidden. Uh, it's sort of in the corner of Green Park, away from most things, away from the central bits of the Wellington Arch, etc. And there's this huge road next to it, making it hard to access. And the men inside the statue, they're also hidden under a roof. You know, and with these columns in the way, that means it's almost as if they're hiding from something. Okay, what was Bomber Command and what was their mission? Well, actually they were set up with relatively good intentions to uh, destroy the German war machine. So the, the aim was to destroy the factories where they were building the uh, armoured cars and the, the guns, the munitions, etc. of Germany. And they, the initially the way they said they would do this at the beginning of the Second World War, well, sort of 1941-ish, was they were going to bomb in daylight so they could see their target nicely and they were going to get it quite low and they could do some specific targeting so that they would not damage too much civilian uh, occupation or the cities full stop. That was their initial intention. This, though, wasn't really very successful in terms of the numbers of deaths. It says in there 55,000 British airmen died. That's out of 125,000 members. That's about 44% or something like that, an unbelievable attritional rate. And this was because they were, uh, initially they were, it was extremely dangerous. Flying low in daylight, the flak and the German Luftwaffe could just pop, pop them off easily. The amount of deaths in the British R R R Bomber Command at the, initially was disastrous. This was not something that was working. So they had to change tact. By, and this was led by a man called Arthur Harris. More about him in a moment. And their, their tactic was to bomb at night and to bomb at a higher altitude. This meant that the bombers, the planes that they were flying, they would be safer from any German attack. It meant that the death rate in Bomber Command would go down. The problem with that, though, is that they're going to be less accurate, and I mean extremely less accurate. It was perceived that about one in every three of Bomber Command's bomb landed only within five miles of the target. It's an unbelievable amount, and it was just a carpet bombing of 
uh, Germany. And a good example is Hamburg. We'll talk about other cities in a minute, but Hamburg was one of the first, actually, of the German cities to be, have this new tactic. And 80% of Hamburg was destroyed. That was Germany's second city at the time. An unbelievable amount. Uh, 60,000 people died in that event. Only 45,000 people died in the Blitz. That's an, uh, within just one, ta 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 one bombing of Germany from Bomber Command killed the same amount as all of Britain was killed in the Second World War. More on that uh, controversy in a minute. And the tactics would be, a first rally would be the bombs would dropped off, and then a second uh, infantry would just send incendiaries for the aim of fire to spread, and they would make sure they would, a, a favourable wind would go across and the, the entire city gets destroyed. So quite aggressive tactics. Now, this tactic was led by a man called Arthur Harris, which there is actually a memorial statue of him in London elsewhere. <laughs> Now here on the Strand actually is a statue of Arthur Harris, Bomber Harris, and this too is not without controversy. It was erected in 1992 and the German embassy requested that it not be uh, built. The mayor of Cologne made big complaints to the British government, etc. Indeed, it was opened in 1992, unveiled in 1992 by the Queen Mother, and she made a speech and she was heckled with the words, mass murderer, mass murderer, shouted out. The statue then was put under 24-hour guard and since then it's been vandalised and graffitied quite a lot and there was a rejuvenation again in 2020 in the wake of the murder of George Floyd and the, the Black Lives Matter movement where lots of statues were being questioned. And this it was brought up again whether we should have the statue to Bomb Harris or sometimes some people call him Butcher Harris. Controver this is also a very controversial statue. Now Arthur Harris who became known as Bomber Harris, he epitomised this new tactic of Bomber Command. His aim was total destruction of German morale. He wanted to destroy the German economy, destroying these cities, but he also wanted to crush their morale. He wanted to beat them into submission. And it was called uh, aerial cam uh, bombing, where you would just not target anything really specific, you'd just go, I'm going to bomb Hamburg, I'm going to bomb Dresden, I'm going to bomb Berlin. Carpet them. This is total war. This is a means to an end. You must destroy Germany. Now, this is interesting. Germany was not giving up. The Nazis, they, Adolf Hitler, was in, he was not going to surrender. Even though he perhaps he should have done, the German economy was failing. They had no oil. They were having a horrendous war in the East against the Russians. They should have given up. And this is perhaps what Harris and others, uh, Churchill, etc., might have probably thought. So we'll bomb them quite a bit aggressively, but hopefully it won't drag on too long because they'll give in. This uh, unfortunately didn't work, and the death toll is horrific. 600,000 German lives, civilian lives, are lost through bomber command. A an unbelievable amount. When you consider only about 60,000 died in bom the German bombing of Britain, that's one in 10. Now, initially, this tactic of bomber command was popular with the British people. Great, we're destroying the German morale. Fantastic, that's justified. They bombed us. This is a war. We want to end this war quickly. We will uh, do this tactic. Fine. But then the attack on Dresden happened, and this was seen and perceived by many as pretty terrible. It came about, actually, from a leaked document which saw that, and it used this phrase, terror bombing, but it looks as if the media at the time, just nearing the end of the Second World War, got this idea that the RAF was terror bombing, the German people, and everybody thought, oh, I'm not so sure about that. And Churchill then thought, oh, I'm going to distance myself from that, brushes it under, carp under the carpet. So suddenly, those men in there, who we saw, those airmen, they go from the heroes of uh, ending the war, suddenly to quite villainous. This idea of, you're, you know, you're being terrorising the German people, that is not a good thing. And indeed, for many of them, they didn't get a specific medal after the Second World War. They didn't get this war memorial. This wasn't until 2012 they got this memorial. So they were forgotten about, they were derided, and indeed the historians of the 50s and 60s really hammered in to Bomber Command saying this is awful, they shouldn't have done it, uh, and they get forgotten. Now as time went on, a new generation of historians came through and there was a distance, obviously, uh, from this. A, there was a call to have a memorial for Bomber Command. And the, one of the main arguments was, well, there's memorials to lots of things. There's memorials to various different countries, uh, New Zealand and India and Canada. And there's even a memorial to the animals in war as well. So there was a call perhaps there needs to be Bomber Command because of the losses that they faced. So by sort of 2008, etc., they came about with this idea of building this Bomber Command. But unfortunately, like many things in the 21st century, it became a divisive thing. 
uh, with the internet, with fake news, etc. And it became a divisive thing between the left wing and the right wing elements within the media. And the right wing uh, media, led by various different newspapers, want, were pushing for this memorial, had to be. Left wing media kind of felt left behind by it, but obviously then reacted a little bit. And it's certainly online, it did get a very uh, controversial with all the fake news. There was a, a an element of fake news came about that was apparently the, the Labour-run council were denying this memorial was going to be, or were, were trying to block it. Obviously this was not real, but there were headlines in the right-wing media uh, saying, you know, the bomber command are being denied, these heroes are denied once again, that element. And so unfortunately something that perhaps could have, should have been maybe a bit anodyne, maybe, and a bit sort of, yes, we should memorialise, 55,000 men died, unbelievable amount. Uh, it got a bit uh, lost within that. And actually, it's interesting, on the side of the uh, both of the memorial, you've got the names of the key donors, one of which is Lord Ashcroft, there's Richard Desmond, and Richard Desmond owned uh, the Daily Express, and Lord Ashcroft donated a million pounds to this, one of the main donators to the Conservative Party as well. So it became politicised, which World War II has become politicised now within our uh, debate. And so it was opened in 2012 by the Queen, maybe perhaps it's died down now, but at that time it was controversial. But, of course, one of the main reasons why it's controversial is because Bomber Command itself was controversial and the Allied bombing of Germany was controversial. And let's talk a bit about that controversy. Well, there's legal and ethical elements, of course. The legal element was that during World War II, there were the Hague Conventions going around. We've had the Geneva Convention and other things since then that have clarified that, but it was a legal grey area. It had Those Hague Conventions were written in the 1890s, and they had said that you should not target civilians but they had made, said army and navy should not target because the Air Force didn't exist in the 1890s. So the Air Force therefore was in this grey area. Do, do, is the Air Force counted on this? Um, I don't know. So that kind of maybe is how they got away with the whole targeting of civilians. Now the ethical controversy is obvious. This comes about why should you target civilians? Are civilians actual military target? Bomber Harris's idea was that not only should we attack the factories, we should also attack the homes of the factory workers. That is a legitimate target in a total war. World War II, by the uh, uh, mid-1940s, was a total war. It was a war that had transcended many other wars. And he felt, and many others felt in Britain, that you have to win this war, you have to target the factory workers' homes as well. That is, of course, controversial. Throw in with that as well, many German historians, especially in the 1950s and 60s and a bit late, maybe a little bit later, they compared this to the Allies' bomber campaign, to the Holocaust. They said, well, you know, you blame Germany for the Holocaust, is not your indiscriminate killing just as bad? Now I can see that argument, of course, but personally I have no truck with that, because the way you can look at that is that if, as soon as the Allies had won the war, they would have stopped the bombing. If Germany had won the war, I don't think they would have stopped the Holocaust. They would have carried it on and indeed it would have got worse. So uh, there's also the racial element, which is another thing to, to go into. The final thing to say on the controversy is, again, we've mentioned this idea of total war. What was the alternative to this? And the same argument goes for the dropping of the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima. Do, should Britain have declared itself, yes, we'll fight the Nazis, they were never going to give up, should we fight them for another 10 years, inching ourselves, inching back where, you know, Normandy landings take, and hundreds of thousands of men dying on both sides, do you do this, is that the better way to do it, or do you try to bomb them into this and try and end the war quicker? Remember, Britain had only been won the First World War 30 years previously, there was fatigue, they wanted to win this war. The only other thing I want to add is this idea of Britain itself and remembering World War II, just general war memorials in Britain full stop, because yes, Britain won the Second World War, we were one of the three victors with the USA and the Soviet Union, but did we actually, are we, are we the heroes of the Second World War or are we actual victims? And that's something I think these guys in Bomber Command, they can't quite figure out whether they are heroes or whether they are victims. Another thing, perhaps you can let me know. You know, we did win the Second World War, but it, we had it ended our empire. We haven't really recovered economically. It's certainly not on the, the world stage. It's certainly compared to the other victors of um, the United States and Soviet Union initially, and maybe dare I say Russia. We are we before the Second World War, Britain was at the forefront of nations. Now we are lapping behind. And again, when this was then built in 2012, we were in the exact same situation. What purpose do we have? Uh, and as always, these war memorials, they sort of say more about the society that builds them than actually the society that they are memorialising. So how should Britain remember the Second World War and how should Britain move on? Big, big questions maybe worth looking at. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that was rather interesting. Please do let me know your thoughts and 
As always, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.